Everyone, thank you so much for joining in for the first ever Zealous Experience Online. We are so happy that you have tuned in to spend your Sunday with us. We are glad that in times like this, we can bring you this experience, whether you're in the city, you're in the country, or hopefully even another part of the globe. We're so happy that you choose to join us for our Zealous Experience. Doing life is one of the privileges we have as a community. We meet every week at a physical location, but considering the current scenario, we thought it's best to bring in the physical experience online. And uh, we are excited to see how this goes. Uh, we're gonna be doing this for the next few weeks, so make sure that you connect with us at online.zealous.community. We can't wait to do Sundays with you over here for the next few weekends. Right, we welcome you once again for our Sunday experience, the first ever Zealous experience online. And I'm excited to bring the word to you from my house. Uh, with everything that's happening in the city, uh, one thing that excites me is that the message of the gospel is still going forward. And we're excited to bring you the first ever, like I said, Zealous experience online. If you have been attending our physical locations, if you have been attending uh, our, our Sunday gatherings, or if you have been taking our time to listen to our podcast uh, called Zealous Talks on all these platforms, we have been talking about living and pursuing a life of righteousness. What it means for you and me to live a life that is in right standing with God. And for the past few weeks, it's been an exciting journey reading from the Bible and learning what it, what it, what it means on a daily basis, not just on a Sunday basis, but on a daily basis to pursue a life of right standing. And today I'm so excited that it's amazing certain things how God puts into place when you really seek God. Uh, I started my Monday just dwelling on what I had spoken on last Sunday about, you know, I've got issues. That's, that was my title talk for last week, I've got issues. And one of the things we were discussing is that we spoke about tangible actions and decisions when, uh, which, which plays such an important role when it comes to pursuing a life of righteousness. And today I, I felt I just want to emphasize a bit more on some of the basic important uh, decisions that you and me need to take or that you and me take on a consistent basis. In fact, in the current scenario, it's a daily essential. It's a daily essential that we discuss and talk about this. And as much as I don't know where you are right now. As much as you would have stocked up on your sanitizers, as much as you would have stocked up on all the hand washes and the tissue rolls or whatever items that you think are going to keep you safe, I wonder if you and me have taken out time to stock up our lives with prayer. The next few minutes, I want to talk to you on one of the most essential things that you and me can stock up as a Christ follower in this, in this time is your time of prayer. Is my time, our times, as a community, as an individual of prayer. Now, most of you know this, how important prayer is. Most of you do it, practice it, but I want to re-emphasize in a time like this how much we need to put prayer into practice, right? How much we need to put it into practice because it's a lifestyle and a mindset of prayer which is essential for every Christ follower. I want to say that again, a lifestyle and a mindset of prayer is essential for every Christ follower. Now, if you grew up in a, in a setting where prayer was forced on you, I'm sure you're, you're one of me, uh, you're something like me, you would not like sitting for your times of prayer. Because I remember my, my journey of prayer has taken a massive shift over the few years. I remember one of those stories where I was a kid, I was very fond of my grandmoms, I used to love hanging out with her. Wherever she went, I used to follow her, and she was a woman of prayer. And, and every evening, not, not once in a week, not twice in a week, but almost every evening, she made me sit down with her, and she made me pray. Now, the first few minutes, the first few days rather, was so difficult for me. I remember I even dozed off when she was praying. We have all been there, right? I mean, dozing off and prayer kind of go hand in hand for some of you people. Or some of me, uh, I've, I've, been, I've been in that, that space. And I remember that one, one time where she was encouraging me to pray and I just did not feel like praying. Anybody felt like that? 
And it's crazy what hit me once, uh, and, and it's kind of that, that statement has really shaped my perspective and my approach towards prayer. And I want to share that with you, this one simple basic thought. Prayer is not a ritual. Prayer is a privilege. I want to say that again. Prayer is not a ritual. Prayer is a privilege. See, because it's a privilege for you and me to bring our requests and our petitions before a God who listens. It's a privilege for you and me to bring our requests before a God who not just listens but also responds. And that's the privilege that you and me have as a community of faith to bring our requests and things before God. It's a privilege for you and me not just to pray for our needs, not just to pray for our wants, not just to pray for God to do things only in our life, but it's a privilege for you and me to stand and pray for the needs of others. So I want to, the first thing I want to get across to all of us is that prayer is not a ritual. Prayer is a privilege. And, and the other thought that has shaped my thinking of prayer, and I think this, some of you would even be aware of this, is prayer is not a monologue. Yeah. Prayer is a dialogue between God and you. And, and these two principles kind of entire shift our perspective when you look at praying, when you look at a life of prayer, when you look at understanding and living out a life of prayer, is that prayer is a dialogue and a privilege. Because if you read and study the life of people in the Bible, most of them never missed out on having that dialogue with God. They made sure that in order to pursue a life of right standing, in order to pursue a life that ensures flourishing, in order to pursue a life that ensures that there's peace, there's love, there's joy, they never missed out on their life of prayer. So for the next few minutes, we're going to be diving in and seeing what are some of the things that Jesus modeled when it comes to prayer? What are some of the things that his people in the Bible talked about, lived out those things? And, and I want to just kind of help you and me realize Jesus modeled prayer and a lifestyle of prayer, not just for himself, but for his followers as well. And today, as you and me are on this journey of knowing and understanding what it means to be a Christ follower, I want to encourage you to dive in and, and plug in with us to see how we can learn the experience and the journey of prayer together. Now, if you're a person who loves celebrating, we all love celebrating mountaintop experiences. Am I right? We all love celebrating mountaintop experiences. Now, it's in these moments where you know, things are so smooth, everything is going all right, everything is working in your favor, everything seems to be just about right. We all love mountaintop experiences. But Jesus modeled a literal mountaintop experience for us. He modeled an experience which was so unique, so special. And what happens, I don't know if you've been in this space, but what happens when, when everything seems to be going right in your life, it's almost your life you're living in on, on an autopilot mode. But Jesus is encouraging something very unique for you and me when he's talking about his life of prayer. Jesus modeled a literal mountaintop experience where we see, if you read in the Bible, there are these moments where he moved away from the crowd and you would find him on a mountain. Not just chilling and not just seeing the scenery and just getting a glimpse of everything that's happening, but he went out, he moved out from the crowd so that he could plug into something. And that's what we're going to be talking about. You know, Jesus was not just trying to get away. He was plugging in. Oh, that's right. He was plugging into something. Jesus modeled intimacy and not isolation through the times of prayer. In a time where people are, are preferring to get to isolate themselves, to seclude themselves in these dangerous moments, as much as some of it needs to be done, I want to challenge you to shift your perspective this evening. I want to tell you it's important for you and me to model intimacy and not isolation. Yeah. It's intimacy that's going to help you, not isolation. Through prayer, we plug in to a time of intimacy with God. Through prayer, we plug in to witness and experience the presence of God in our lives and situations. Through prayer, we learn to see things and situations from God's eternal truth, not just through facts and realities. 
you know, during these tough times that we are facing as a city and as a nation, let's make room for intimacy with God and not just isolation with yourself. We cannot experience intimacy if we are caught up in the middle of chaos and the thoughts and the noises that are speaking into our, into our lives. It's, it's only the intimate moments with God and with Christ that are going to make you stronger, that are going to give you direction and that are going to give you clarity in everything that we are, we are caught up in right now. So I want to challenge you. Can you create those moments of intimacy between God and yourself. See, because Jesus spending time with God through prayer, that's a fantastic example that you and me can look up to. That's, that's, a, that's an example that has been modeled out so well, that has been modeled out in such a beauty, in such a beautiful manner that you and me just don't have to read about it, but we can learn about it. And I want to challenge you, your prayers and our prayers are opportunities for worry to turn into faith. I want to say that again. Our prayers are opportunities for worry to turn into faith. You and me as a community, we have such a fantastic time and opportunity right now to speak a language of truth, to speak a language of faith, to speak a language of hope. You know, because as a community of faith, that's our role. It's your role and it's my role to speak a language of encouragement where times are so troublesome. You know, I want to, before we dive into the scripture, I want to remind you, go back and help you. If you see Luke chapter 5 and verses 16, uh, you see verse 16, this gives a fantastic example of exactly what I was talking about. Jesus, it says, but he himself withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. The Amplified Version puts it in a better way. It says... He, but he himself withdrew in retirement to the wilderness slash desert and prayed. You know, Jesus, whether it was a mountaintop or it was a desert, he did not move when it came to a lifestyle of prayer. So whether you, today you're caught up in a mountaintop experience or whether you're in a desert, prayer is valuable. Prayer is important. And, and like I said, you and me have this great opportunity to model and live out a life of intimacy with God through your prayers. As a community, it's our role and it's our duty to speak encouragement, not just through our words, but through our prayer as well. A genuine prayer is powerful and brings hope in all situations. A genuine prayer is powerful and brings hope, not just in few, but in all situations. See, because a life of right standing with God is always hopeful. If you and me are pursuing this life in, in, in a way that is righteous, we are to be a community that is hopeful. We are to be a community that believes and hopes for the best in all situations. Not just in a few, but in all situations, we hope for the best. A mindset of faith, hope, and love is sustained only through prayers. It's not just praying on a Sunday. It's not just praying for those five minutes. It's not just praying for that one hour. The duration of your prayer life is not important. The consistency is. Yeah. How consistent are you and me when it comes to our journey of prayer? That's a question that you and me really need to ask because that is the daily essentials that we need to focus on during these times. See, because if you go back to the scripture, Jesus gives some basic yet such important guidelines when it comes to prayer. If you see Matthew chapter 5, Ma Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 7, and if you read the Passion Translation, it says, Whenever you pray, be sincere and not like the pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying before others in the meetings and on street corners. Believe me, they've already received in full their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God, praying to Him in secret. And your Father who sees all that you do will reward you openly. 
When you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases, praying like those who don't know God. For they expect God to hear them because of their many words. You know, if you can just read those few verses again and just just pick on a few words, and that's that's something I want to highlight as we close out. You know, Jesus gives some basic yet such important guidelines when it comes to prayer. First thing he says, be sincere. Be sincere when it comes to your prayers. Be sincere when it comes to your requests. Be sincere when it comes to everything that you bring before God because he knows it all. The second thing he says, cut off all the noise and the chaos of the realities that are surrounding you. I'm telling you, somebody said this and said this in such a beautiful way. The most easiest and the most toughest thing to ever do is get into the presence of God. The most easiest and the most toughest thing you can ever do is get into the presence of God. So cut off all the noise and the chaos of the realities that are surrounding you if you and me have to get plugged into a time of intimate prayer. And I love it. I want to, I want to say it as it is, the third thing. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep your prayer life real. If you're angry with God, let God know about it. If you're frustrated with God, Please feel free to voice out your frustrations. If, you, if you're upset, if you're angry, if you're happy, if you're joyful, God is a God who listens and who can respond in those moments. So I want to challenge you, Zealous. I want to challenge you, the global family that's listening. Prayer has a power to shift and change your environments. Prayer has a power to bring clarity and wisdom. Prayer brings direction and purpose. And I love it, this particular passage in James chapter 5, where he's telling and he's writing to the community and he tells them, James chapter 5, 13 to 17, are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? Encourage them to pray. That's right. He says what? Encourage them to pray. Are they happy? Cheerful ones among you, encourage them to sing out their praises. Are there any sick among you? Then ask the elders of the church to come and to pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have committed any, committed any sins, they will be forgiven. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power, this is, this is the great part of, of this verse, for tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. I want to challenge you guys, our prayers, your prayers are powerful. The Bible says it, tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. It's in times like this where everything that we believe in needs to come into action. It's in times like this where all that we have heard and spoken and talked about love needs to come into action. It needs to be displayed. It's, it's in times like this where everything that we speak about hope needs to come into action. And prayer is going to help us sustain that life of faith, hope, and love. And I want to challenge you. Tremendous power is released through a heartfelt, a passionate heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. We are in times where we can be the people of faith, hope, and love. We are living in times where our prayers are not just shaping the situations around us, but I believe our prayers have the power to shape us as well. That's how your prayers are going to bring out the righteous side of you. That's how through your prayers and through your life of faith, hope and love, we can pursue a life of right standing with God. So I want to encourage you zealous. We all need the daily essentials of prayer. I want to encourage you. We all need the daily essentials of hope in Christ. I want to encourage you. We all need the daily essentials of peace found in the intimate times with Jesus. So can I challenge you tonight? Can we continue to stock up well with these daily essentials? God bless you. Have a great week filled with faith, hope, and love in Jesus. 
Hey fam, if you have enjoyed our first ever Zealous experience online and this talk, Daily Essentials, we want you to know this is not just for this evening. We would love to get in touch with you. If you have any particular prayer request or any need, just click on this button below this video and we would get in touch with you. You know, just like we heard some time back, prayer is a privilege. It's not a ritual. And it's such a great time for you and me to step in and pray together. We're going to take the next few minutes to pray for everything that's happening when it comes to COVID-19 virus, not just in the city of Pune, but in our nation and also different cities globally, whatever is happening. Uh, there's a state of panic. There's a state of fear. And the first thing you and me can pray for is for peace. The, first, the, the other thing we can pray together is for hope and, and, and fear to go away and faith to arise. So can we take the next few minutes to pray for the global family, for every single person in these respective cities, for hope, for peace, and to faith to arise. Let's lift up our voices and pray together. God, we just want to thank you for this time. We pray, Lord, in times of uncertainties, in times where there's panic, where there's so much of fear, we pray, Lord, that your hope would arise. We pray for the medical professionals. We pray for wisdom. We pray for clarity. We pray also, God, for protection over every single person uh, going through these tough uh, times, Lord, and these tough moments. Let the, we pray, God, that there would be no confusion. You would bring in clarity for your people and, and the people of the city and the nation of India and even in the global cities, Lord, where people have been affected. Let your will be done. Let hope arise. Let people lift up their voices and pray as a community together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're also going to be putting up some of the prayer pointers on the screen. So maybe if you're with your friends, uh, if you're with your family, or you're even alone watching this right now, you can take out some time and pray along with us. We are believing for some great breakthroughs even through these prayer points. So join us in this time of prayer, church.